So I'm really thrilled and honored to have uh, Kamehameha Rashida here with us. Um, if you did not see the, uh, the More Mother performance last night, you really missed out. It was, it was something special and um, uh, pretty incredible. Um, and they have, uh, um, together they've been um, developing and discussing their creative practice called Black Quantum Futurism, um, which I, I saw a talk at Transmedial that you gave, I think, in a, um, and is really one of the uh, most unique and exciting uh, conceptions of um, being a creative practitioner that I've seen in quite some time. So please, thank you so much. Glad to have them here. Hi, everybody. Thanks for having us. Uh, my name is Rashida. This is Kame, aka More Mother. We go by Black Quantum Futurism. Um, we do. We're from Philadelphia. Um, we do a lot of multidisciplinary, interdisciplinary art. Um, we write. We create soundscapes. Um, we do visual art, um, but we also combine that with what's called activism, but for us it's really just everyday living, um, being in our community and working with our community. Um, so we also have a space in Philly called Community Futures Lab, uh, where we're doing oral histories and providing resources um, to a distressed neighborhood in Philly that's undergoing um, mass displacement of poor folks, mostly black and brown folks. Um, so we do that as well, and we do a number of other things. I'm a housing attorney as well by day. Um, so tonight we're going to just kind of give you some snippets of our practice and our theory, and uh, hope you enjoy. We also have some books up here for sale, uh, and we'll also open it up for questions um, at the end of our reading. So thank you. Travel experiments. Number one, recall a memory, then get inside of the memory to actually re experience it. Not just a flash or image, but build up the scene of the memory like a playset and step onto the stage. Describe the memory from the perspective of the other objects in the room. Two, pay attention to thoughts that you have and order them in terms of their relation to the past, present or future. For example, if you have a thought about something you plan to do tomorrow, order that into the future. If you have a memory of the past, order that into the past. If you have a present sensation, such as a thought about a current surrounding or feeling of discomfort, place that thought into the present category. As you categorize these thoughts, notice where you place the future thoughts, past thoughts, and present thoughts in your imagination. Are the past thoughts behind you and the future thoughts in front of you? Take a thought from either one of these categories and reverse the direction. If it is a past thought, for example, reverse the thought so that you see it in front of you. For a thought about the future, reverse. Reverse it so that you see the thought behind you. Four. Take one of the future thoughts that you have reversed and build up a memory of it. 
just like you did for the past memory in exercise one. Place your consciousness inside of the future memory to experience it. Take one of the past memories that you have reversed and walk into it as if it is unfamiliar, as if you are experiencing it for the first time. Where is the master clock? Who watches it and who keeps time? the master clock stop? Does time stop? Most people take their everyday experiences of time as a factual, unalterable facet of reality. There are clocks that chart the hours, minutes, and seconds. Calendars that chart the march of days, months, and years. Suns, planets, and stars that chart the ages, mapping out cosmic time. But more subtle, however, are the ways in which time governs our social interactions, regulates our motions and our movements, frames our worldviews, informs our politics, and leaks into our very consciousness. The ways in which we are situated in time are reflected in how we talk about think about and conceptualize the world around us. In America and in many other places, natural time has been overthrown by Western linear time, where temporal orientation is facilitated by clocks, schedules, cell phones, and digital calendars. The word future, by definition, designates a time period or temporal space that is not now, one that is situated ahead or before us, and that is distinctive from times that lie behind or before the one we are situated in. Etymologically, future developed out of old French future during the late 14th century, meaning a time after the present or that which is yet to be. Future can be further traced back to the Latin futurus via the stem few, to grow or to become, which is the future participle of the word essay or to be. The Oxford Dictionary notes that both essay and future share be at their root, which may explain why the word before can both denote an event that has already passed and is now in the past or an event that has not yet happened. Notions of the future as that which lies ahead vary greatly. In traditional indigenous African spatio-temporal consciousness, for example, time was experienced as a matter of pacing, akin to walking, with the time beginning when you arrive at your destination. African time has also been said to have a backwards linearity and that when events occur, they immediately move backwards towards what John Mbiti calls Zamani time or macro time. Future events are situated in potential time until experienced or actualized. Those events do not depend on a specific clock time or calendar dates for their manifestation instead. Time depends on the quality of the event and the person experiencing it. Once the future event is determined and experienced, it instantaneously moves backwards into the present and the past dimensions. Those two dimensions bear the most ontological significance, where a person experiences time partly in his own individual life and partly through the society which goes back many generations before his own birth. In contrast, a traditional European spatial temporal consciousness 
around and prior to the 14th century saw time as flow and inevitability. Early recordings of an abstract sense of time as a continuous duration arose during the 14th century, while the word time itself derives from the word tide or titis, which has its etymological roots in a Sanskrit word for division, to cut up or to flood, as in the time of high water. Within a European Judeo-Christian religious order, Work and prayer times were heavily regulated by laws. Because of a belief in biblical apocalyptic visions of the end being near, time had to be tightly regulated. In Time Wars, Jeremy Rifkin notes that Western culture has institutionalized its images of the future by way of religion and politics, making sure that the future can be made predictable and controlled. It is through religion and politics that a linear temporal orientation first came to be discerned simultaneous to the development of Western culture. The structure of time eventually came to be organized discreetly and causally into a past, present, and future, with fixed events set against a forward-moving timeline, one that would eventually come to a climactic, chaotic end. This progressive future, one that is unidirectional and that does not allow access to the past, was further forged through other significant events in science and technology. Scholar Dorn Van Rossum notes, only since the scientific revolution in the middle of the 17th century can one speak of experimentally qualifying scientific procedures and conceptions of time as a scaled continuum of discrete moments. The increased building and usage of public clocks and eventually personal watches and timepieces further inscribe the mechanical order of time, impacting all aspects of the Western way of life. The second law of thermodynamics developed around 1854 also reinforced the linear notion of time speeding into the future toward a chaotic end while other significant temporal historical events, such as the building of the first long distance railroads and the invention of the telegram, allowed the future to be conquered through a compression of space time. British Foreign Minister Lord Rosenberry noted, for example, in 1839, that the motivations for colonizing Africa is not about the present, not about what we want right now, but what we shall want in the future. Roseberry considered the future as something to be mined, acknowledging the metaphor by stating that they were engaged in the business of pegging out claims for the future, considering he and his fellow imperialist trustees to the future of his race. Many of the radical movements, both during and after slavery, actively took on the language of the future in seeking to empower people to rise above their present circumstances. For radicals in the struggle for freedom from racial oppression, the future offered a potential source of hope. In 1892, abolitionist and former slave Frederick Douglass told a group of black students at Atlanta University, be not discouraged. There is a future for you and a future for me. However, on the other hand, in a speech delivered on July 4th, 1854, he observed that America is false to its past, false to its present, and solemnly binds itself to be false to the future. Marcus Garvey, founder of the Universal Negro Improvement Association, found history to be a hopeful precursor for the future, one that was subject to the creative forces of the oppressed. He told his followers, we have a beautiful future, we have a beautiful history, and we shall create another in a future that will astonish the world. At the turn of the century, an avant-garde Italian social movement known as Futurism attempted to revolutionize and reappropriate notions of the future in art, architecture, literature, and culture. 
Believing that the cult of reverence to the past and tradition should die, they created manifestos, artwork, music, and critical theory around a future rapidly speeding toward them. Much like Einstein's relativistic future, the future had run into now, or as Filippo Marinetti wrote in Manifesto on Futurism in 1909, time and space died yesterday. Notions of the future have virtually defined the genre of modern day science fiction. These future visions began these future visions began to take on a dystopian tone following the Victoria era of wonder, space travel, and high tech. H.G. Wells spent much of his career time traveling into dystopian futures through fiction, essays, and speeches, while George Orwell's novel 1984 and 1950 famously warns that who controls the past controls the future, who controls the present controls the past. Real life science and technology have benefited from the imagination of science fiction as much as the reverse. Many sci-fi writers are in fact scientists or contacted by scientists when their work predicts the future or thinks up new possibilities and uses for technology. But the inevitable consequence of the rapidly changing future envisioned by the Italian futurists and the ones illustrated by science fiction is what Alvin Toffler called future shock in 1970 to describe the shattering stress and disorientation that we induce in, in individuals by subjecting them to too much change in too short of a time. He believed that the greatly accelerated rate of social and technological change in our society produced mostly negative personal and psychological consequences arising from the superimposition of a new culture upon an old one, producing a form of culture shock from which the victim can never recover. But this was what Marinetti and the Italian futurists wished for, a future now, one permanently spit from the past, brought about by a violent expansion of the scope of change. The term future shock itself spread through popular culture, theory, and media. Curtis Mayfield had a song called Future Shock on his album, which was in turn covered by Herbie Hancock as the title track for his 1983 recording, a jazz funk electronic fusion that was considered futuristic for its time. Future Shock, as described by Mayfield, is a world of poverty, drugs, addiction, hunger, desperation. He asks, when won't we understand this is our last and only chance? Everybody, it's a future shock. His words hearken to use of a presentism time orientation. The dark side of the future is now. This represents how oppressed people today, particularly the descendants of enslaved Africans, embody temporal tensions, a disunity between cultural notions of time and space. Little analyzed are the ways in which contemporarily a presentism time orientation is connected to class, poverty, oppression, racism, and the legacy of slavery. Maintaining a sense of presentism over a sense of futurism has also been both a defense mechanism against black communal trauma and post-trauma under the conditions of class warfare and racial oppression deriving from slavery and a hearkening back to a more natural, ancestral, temporal, spatial consciousness. For example, Michelle M. Wright cautions that if we use the linear progress narrative to connect the African continent to Middle Passage blacks today, we run into a logical problem because our timelines move through geography chronologically with enslavement taking place at the beginning or in the past and the march toward freedom moving through the ages toward the far right end of the line or arrow, which also represents the present. Additionally, Rifkin explains the consequence of the linear progress narrative being applied to an oppressed people, keeps them confined in a narrow temporal band, unable to anticipate and plan for their own futures, powerless to affect their own political fates. 
For those deprived of access to the future, the future becomes untrustworthy, unpredictable. They become stuck, only being able to plan for the present and limited time in the future as the society around them speeds forward in illusory linear progress. This narrow temporal band is used to penalize people on a daily basis. Being 10 minutes late to court, for example, can mean losing your kids, your job, your home, your freedom, your life. Hierarchies of time and lack of access to the future informs intergenerational poverty in the same way that wealth passes down between generations in traditionally privileged families. Time is a commodity. Womanist and feminist movements have also featured the future prominently. Wright notes examples of black womanist writers such as Octavia Butler and Alice Walker who create bold new models for a self-defined or internally defined notion of time. The time-traveling black woman protagonist Dana in Butler's fantasy novel Kindred, for example, has to ensure the continuation of her, family time, her family's timeline in the antebellum South, and by extension, her own birth hundreds of years into the future. How do we begin to map our return to our own futures? One way that radicals today can more affirmatively claim or create the future is by actively engaging temporality and adopting alternative temporal orientations and frameworks which in turn help to shift the meaning or placement of the future as well as shifting the means of access to that future. The new time rebels advocate a radically different approach to temporality. Interrelated to the concept and community of Afrofuturism has emerged over the last 20 years and has developed as a tool, medium, and lens that black marginalized communities across the diaspora can use to evaluate or shape our own futures. Art curator and Afrofuturist and mayoral candidate Ingrid LaFleur describes Afrofuturism as a way of imagining possible futures through a black cultural lens while professor and artist D. Denenge Akpem calls it an exploration and methodology of liberation, simultaneously both a location and a journey. Afrofuturism lends itself well to exploring notions of institutional liberation, unearthing our true histories, mapping our futures, understanding our present conditions in the flow of time and through a speculative lens because it provides a perpetual bridge between the past, present, and future, Afrofuturism and the black speculative imagination can be used as liberation technologies to free us from time.
see I'm going to build my own time. High above everything, just can't figure out how to get back up there. Lost track of everything. Can't use their clock. Never seems to be working. Always two minutes pass or a quarter till. These minutes and seconds disappear and reappear with each step. Who is collecting on this invisible currency? that is Western science was born of the politics of the 17th century, bifurcating itself as a practice and institution of empirical thought separate and distinct from philosophical thought. It is essential to note that the scientific institution's development coincided with the emergence of the transatlantic enslavement system its development was also impacted significantly by the Roman Inquisitions. The Inquisitions had condemned Galileo for teaching that the earth moved. Descartes delayed publishing and likely tweaked his philosophical theories on heliocentrism due to the Inquisition's belief in the earth as the center of the universe. Newton conducted his experiments in an effort to prove Descartes wrong, and many of his theories have failed to stand the test of time, whose own scientific history is convoluted in the realm of thermodynamics and relativity. Science is the ultimate political body. The mind-body split. The dualism that persists into present times, the reason why classical physics and quantum physics seemingly contradict. Blinded by its own so-called enlightenment and thusly setting light and dark as opposites, eternally at odds inside of the cascading chaotic universe. Science is really the resulting end of a negotiation. The laws and theories we hold to be commonly true about the world and the universe were all shaped by the hands of a privileged few. Traditional sci-fi, a more imaginative retelling of science history and an anticipation of its trajectory, is steeped in a dark age from which it emerged reinforcing the narratives of white superiority. Because we know science fiction to be social commentary on the de-evolution of society through the use of parable, it is easy to see where the line splits between the science of the haves and the have-nots, and thusly where the line splits between traditional and DIY sci-fi. People on the edges, the intersections, the margins of society can no longer continue to rectify our lack of representation and our lack of survival in traditional science fiction worlds and no longer computes. We are here, we are many, we are political. We are political because skin color is political, because body parts are political, because gender is political, because who you like to fuck is political. Because breathing clean air, because drinking clean water is political. And in order to disavow that political, to challenge the political, to break down the political, you must first understand how it already has you confined. Out of the dust of the crumbling institutions of science divorced from imagination, what they call the hyphenated science fiction, comes science and speculative possibility in a form of metropolarity. A new science for a new world of our own shaping. 
disappear with science left in our care the thermodynamic arrow shoots out into all possible directions here there is no difference between the experimental and the theoretical science fiction is the dying remnant of the old ways of living we are science's proposal to imagination for a happy lifelong union we are time equals space What is retro causality? A place where in the past was a lake. Now all dried up, dark clouds hover above. The present can affect the past. I've been known to be caught in a vortex of digging space between matter. And I was never there. I was never fucking there and it all makes sense. Like the whole thing was a mirage, just me talking to myself. A spell that I was working on. I'm done with that now, no more predictive coding. Predictive coding. Hashtag pataphysics. Hashtag speculative science. Hashtag experimental metaphysics. To perceive the world is to anticipate it. Automatic memory. Brain waves store knowledge about the world and probability of one state of events following another to generate a prediction. See Darwinism. What we perceive is determined by what we know and vice versa. Feedback loop type action exists to validate our predictions, but get this. There is no year. There is no history. There is no past. There are only stories. Everything we think we know, it's just a meme. It's all memes. We can never get at the source. Everything is a building metaphor. We define phenomenon by metaphor because essence is only expressed in terms that we cannot observe or articulate. We can never get at what a thing is in and of itself, its own source, its own existence on its own terms without reference to some other thing. Something outside of the thing itself to give it meaning, to give it contrast, to give it definition. <sighs> but even these words abstract the notion as all things are abstracted and far removed. We build more metaphors into language over top of the old ones and metaphors become like stones or like memes. Self-perpetuating, self-referencing, self-replenishing in its own origin memory. The creation of language is literally hyperbole. Hyper equals beyond. Balo means to throw, and metaphor. Meta is over and across.
therein equals to carry or to bear. We take practical action words and build metaphor on top of metaphor, trading things in and out, branching off until the metaphor becomes the thing itself. Language builds up the world and images. It makes things interchangeable with actions and it allows action to hide behind language. You are activating the energy of the act embedded in the word without actually carrying out the physical action. Language sets us up for phantom actions, which is why the question of what means more actions or words is moot because words are actions taken literally one strip bare of its own etymology, which is why word magic is a shortcut to reality alteration.